have not learned yet, micro work. Micro work tends to be something that people are Going as small as you want to go, and you're also testing this to see running in manual. How does that feel? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Quilters Apothecary. Today, we are doing a much requested tutorial, and that would be on my process of doing micro work. Um, and actually, I should say my process of teaching micro work. The one thing that I want to say to everybody is this is so easy once you do a little bit of practice work on paper. There are just a couple of tips that I'm going to give you that will help. Now, one of the things that I want to say about micro work is this. There are many levels of density with micro work. And when we learn micro work, any design that you know as a typical edge to edge, you can use to actually do your micro work. I've used uh, some of the Flurry of Angels feathers for micro works. I've used the Hearts Take Flight, uh, my swirls. Um, Meander, of course, is the most basic, uh, most used, uh, except for pebbles. Now, pebbles seems to be a really popular one as well. Uh, but frankly, any edge-to-edge -edge design that you already know is one that I'm going to want you to focus on when you're actually practicing your micro work and getting proficient at it. Now, with the density, let me go ahead here and I want you to look at a few pictures that I have of different versions of my micro work. Um, here we have an extremely fine, fine meander type micro work. You can't even tell whether or not I've crossed over. And then here, of course, we have um, some feathers and swirls. Uh, which is one of my favorite micro works to use. And then also remember, when we talk about micro work, we're not just talking about fillers for background areas. Here you can see that I'm using it in the beadboard work for piano keys, which is what I love to do to really make a border or a block or an area sing. And of course, we could use that as well in um, curved crosshatch or simply um, curved type of designs instead of cross hatching it if we just did curved designs which we've shown in a couple different tutorials you could go ahead and fill those in so again there's lots of different ways to use micro work not just as a filler for a round applique so that being said i want to head down to our paper let me get us in focus there. Okay, so now we are back in fo focus. Let's start with the most traditional design that people have used for micro work, and that would be a basic meander. Let me zero in a little bit here. When you are practicing, let me go in. What you're actually going to start with on paper, and you always want to go on paper first because it's all about um, it's all about hand-eye coordination. That's what's going to help you, especially for designs you already know. A lot of people are nervous about micro work because they can't make their machine um, do what they want to do with the hand-eye coordination. You have to really focus and practice on paper first, just like anything, our hand-eye coordination. So if we were doing a basic meander, dog bone meander, dog bone meander, dog bone meander, what I would normally start you off with is to spend about 10 minutes, and I know that sounds like a long time, but spend about 10 minutes just getting comfortable doing that design on paper. Because what will happen is by about 10 minutes, is when your muscle memory has kicked in as you're practicing and that's with any um, edge to edge design that you already know so as you practice that then what's going to happen is about every five minutes after that you're going to start going smaller 
And so you'll spend about five minutes taking that design a little bit further down in size. So you're, you're not shocking your system by trying to take it to micro work right away when you're practicing that. Then in about another five minutes, you'll take it a little smaller, then you'll take it a little smaller, then you'll take it a little smaller until you get to the size of micro work that you think is a nice size that you would actually put on a quilt. So here you can see that we've got a nice size, which would be a nice basic micro work. But remember, we can also take that down a little bit more. And I would suggest taking a half of an hour from start to finish on paper and actually really making it as small as you can possibly go. You may never quilt it that tiny, right? But what I want you to do is to get comfortable with your hand-eye coordination just like this so that that way it's not a struggle when you're actually at the machine trying to go to that size. Now again, like I said before, once you practice this, spend a little bit of time drawing this for about a week that small on paper. Start with a nice medium size and then take it down to here and just spend a good 10 to 15 minutes as small as you can possibly go. And that's part of your homework. And again, that goes with any design. So if I were doing my swirl, and you were following the tutorial and you've done the swirl design as a filler. You would repeat the same process. You would start normal size. And then as you work through it, you would get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And with about 15 to 20 minutes, you would try to get that down to as small as you could possibly go. And you would just continue every five minutes once one size feels comfortable to you then actually take it down another notch until you get it as small as you can possibly go and then once you do that then you would go ahead and you would take that to the machine and then you would work on that and again as I said before it doesn't matter the design. Sometimes I like to use a, a micro work fill that actually has negative space, like a heart is always going to have some negative space. So I might start with my hearts take flight all over, work around. And again, these designs are all up on Patreon. I think hearts take flight is in the um, Mystical Feathers uh, DVD workshop, which is loaded here. And you can all go check that out. Okay, and then go into tons of echo and then continue, and then you would go into hearts. You would work on that, and then you would take that and take that as micro as you could possibly go just to start building that hand-eye coordination. Again, I wouldn't work on this for four minutes and then head over to the machine. I would work on this for about a week, and then I if you've never done micro work, and then I would take these designs. If you want to bring me face forward, Mr. Ritchie. And then I would take these designs over to the machine. But that is my process for taking an edge to edge and turning that into a micro work. Micro work is very important, and especially um, for some of the things coming down the pike here on this channel, we're going to be doing some whole cloth type quilting, which is going to really utilize some of the micro work, as well as you've seen me use some of the border treatments doing the micro work. So that is the process to learn micro work. 
So now that we've kind of understood and followed that process, we're going to go ahead and we're going to head over to the machine. The one tip I will give about utilizing the machine for micro work is this. You know, I had machines for years that only had a ruler foot on it. I mean, that was the only foot that I had for the machines when I started out um, years and years ago because I was always using rulers or that was the foot that I had on some of my older machines. We didn't have other feet. Now we have open-toed uh, feet um, and different types of feet. Uh, and we have some of the new micro feet. And so those are wonderful options to change your feet over and use uh, your micro work in your quilts. What I like to do if I'm doing a quilt that has a lot of micro work in it is I'll quilt the whole quilt, the regular designs, the ruler work, all of that first, and then when that's all done and my quilt is finished except for my micro work, I roll back on the machine and I go ahead and I add my micro work in the quilt. And then that way my brain is in a whole different spot. I can pull up a saddle stool and sit there and I can go ahead and do my micro work. So let's head over to the machine and we're going to quilt some micro work. So here, what I went ahead and did was I went ahead and pre-quilted an example because I want you to see exactly how I would work through and go from a regular size design, i.e. in this case it's the dog bone meander, um, to smaller and smaller. And of course I would go a lot smaller than that, but I did want you to see how I would work through that. Now, I think I had even said before I was going to be working at a little bit of a faster pace. so. This size from here over, you might actually do for about five or ten minutes of a familiar um, edge to edge pattern, just again to get comfortable and then take it down to the next size. And again, keep progressing as it gets totally comfortable as you do it. You're then going to take it down to a smaller and smaller and smaller size. And you're we're gonna, obviously going to go a lot smaller than this. So let's see that process. Now I have my stitch regulator on cruise mode and I have it on a pretty fast mode. I think I have mine on my handy quilter here on 600. It would be different based on whatever machine you have in your cruise mode. If you do not have a cruise mode, a coast mode, start speed mode if you have the Innova, um, whatever your brand of machine would call it. If you do not have one of those modes on your machine, then what I would suggest is to put your machine on manual because it's going to feel a lot smoother. And let me just kind of show that. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to take it off of my um, off of my cruise mode, which is set at 600, and I'm just going to put it on my stitch regulator mode. And I want to show you as I do that. You can hear the difference. Now, this machine runs really, really smooth even on the regular stitch regulator mode. So it's hard to show you, but on some of the older brands of machines, no matter what brand you have, you're going to run into it's going to feel awkward. It's not going to feel as smooth. And then when you slow down in an area, you're not going to get that nice smoothness that you want. That's why I always suggest then to go ahead and put it on the cruise mode and then run it on your cruise mode. So I'm going to switch back over to cruise and I'm going to put it on 600 again. And now you can see that even on slow that's the speed but of course I'm doing a familiar design and again it makes it easier on my body to have that coast cruise start speed mode going. Now I'm feeling real comfortable with that size so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take it down a size. And I'll do that for a little period of time. For me it might be about one to two minutes. For you to do that size and feel totally comfortable with a different size, smaller than what you're used to, it might take about five or ten minutes. And again, you just keep doing that as you take the size down until that design feels totally comfortable. And then at that point, what you'll want to do is to start going smaller. So I'm going to take it down another size. 
I'm going to switch to our other camera in a minute so that I can quilt with both hands. Now I would say this would be a nice size filler for around applique. I would not consider this micro work. I would consider this just a tighter filler. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it down another size. I'm going to lower my handle so that I get control of my machine. And I'm going to take it down another size. Now again, you would have waited until that other size felt even more comfortable. And if you need to slow down your cruise mode speed, then go ahead. But this one is fine with me. I'm used to doing the meander this nice and tight at this speed. And then again, now I will slow it down. Okay, so now I've slowed my cruise speed down even more. I'm going to go even a little bit more small. Everybody considers their sizing of microwork different. The size that would be for me is not going to be the same size as you would have. And I'll show that while I'm doing this on an example. We'll flash up here. There's this size, which is a little bit bigger. And then, of course, this crazy size, which is really small. So again, this is what I would do. I would practice all of your uh, filler designs that you want to practice one at a time. And you're going to take them from regular size down to a smaller size. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and go a little smaller on my swirl design. And I would do that until I started to feel comfortable. And then I would go ahead and shrink it down a little bit more. And of course, if you need to load a thinner thread, like maybe a 60 weight, or if you want to go really crazy, maybe the 100 weight micro quilter, you could do that. So the whole point is just that you're practicing your hand-eye coordination. Now I have a ruler foot on. I'm going to switch, as you can see, to a, um, an open-toed foot, and then I'm going to have a little bit of a better visual. I am so used to working with my ruler foot, because that's what I've done for 20-something years, that it doesn't really matter to me, and I'm right on top of my work, what foot I use. But for you, it might be important to go ahead and switch to... A, um, a different foot. Now, I would say this. Um, one of the things that I would be aware of is I might go through the quilt and do all of my ruler work and all of my regular quilting, and then I would come back and do my microfill. In any areas where there's a, a large area that needs microfill, I would go ahead and put some basting stitches in that so that it stays pretty stable. Then I would come back, switch my foot. That way I'm not constantly switching feet out. So let me go ahead and switch that foot, and then we'll go into another microfill. Okay, so now I've changed out to my open toe so I can see straight on. I can see exactly what I'm doing. So if that's important for you, you know, there are always options. And now the machines these days, it's pretty easy to change the feet. This took like 15 seconds to just unscrew, rescrew in the uh, different feet. So again, the whole point is that you're simply going to practice going as small as you want to go. And you're also testing this to see running in manual, how does that feel? You're getting used to running in manual or cruise. You're looking to see how that would feel. And then again, once you get comfortable with one design, then go ahead and maybe go a little bigger. 
and start with another design. We'll do a little bit of feather work. Get comfortable maneuvering those feathers nice and small. And then you would repeat the same thing. You would start taking that smaller and smaller and smaller just like you did on paper. And as people come in and close to your work and they see all those beautiful little feathers, make sure you do some echoing around there. And again, you need to build that hand-eye coordination so you can stay nice and tight. You're not doing quarter-inch echo here. You could do some hearts. What's nice about doing things like the hearts is that there will be that negative space of the inside of the heart. And then same thing, you would take that smaller and smaller and smaller as you figure that out. Now once you start do some of this stuff, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to move to a proper place. Because once you do feel comfortable with doing edge-to-edge -edge work, you want to time yourself to see how long it takes you to do a section. So I'm going to head over to the block here in just a second, and then we're going to talk a little bit about that. Okay, so I've locked my stitches up in this section of this block. And what I want to do, um, and I, w I actually want you to do, is I want you to go ahead and time yourself to see how long does it take you to do a specific section. That way when you commit to it, you know how long it's going to take to do it. That's important to know, especially for client quilts. When I do um, microfill on a quilt, I charge above and beyond custom, I charge per hour for micro work. So it's not included in the flat custom fee, whatever that would be. Um, whether you charge per hour or per square inch. If you charge per hour, no big deal, you're charging per hour. But if you're charging per square inch, um, then micro work is extra. That's not something you want to include in your custom work because it's a whole different ball game and it adds a lot of time. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to start with my basic meander. Now, the one thing I want to add is I still have my stitches from where I was practicing at 12 stitches per inch. What I would do now that you're actually doing it is I would go ahead and I would go to your stitches per inch and I would go ahead and I would chain those to let's say I'm going to take mine up to about 15 stitches per inch. So now we're at 15 stitches per inch and now you'll see the difference. It's more responsive as I work through that. And especially if you're working around applique or something like that, you want that tighter stitch. And if I were actually going this small, depending on the quilt itself, yep, I would be using my 40 weight thread, but on some quilts or show quilts, I would probably change to a 60 weight. And on some, like I said, I might even change to a um, 100 weight, the micro quilter. And then the bobbin, I would not put the 100 weight micro quilter. What I would do is I would put in my bobbin uh, 60 weight for the 100 weight, just because I don't, I don't like using the 100 weight in the bobbin myself. Some people do, that's fine. They win lots of ribbons. They do wonderful jobs with those. So your goal is, to fill in a space like this just to see exactly how long it would take you to do that particular section. Now let me go to
not deep micro, this is regular micro I would consider it for myself, but throw in those feathers so that they see that feather texture. Add my swirls to travel and fill with my echo whenever I want. Go into some more feather fronds. And again, it's a slow, this is when a book on tape is a good thing to have going because this is nice, tedious work. And I'll flash a few samples here up on the screen. Okay, so a few final thoughts as we close out our micro work tutorial. You know, I know for some people, especially for those of us over 40, uh, you can have some issues with visibility and being able to see things. You know, I definitely always have my reading glasses handy um, so that I can really get down in there and look at it. And of course, the other thing I like to use, of course, is my saddle stool. Um, a lot of times if you have the, um, um, the, the lenses, the, um, what are they called, the, the craft optic, uh, nope, not the craft op optics, but the um, um, actual um, magnifying lens that you can attach to your handle and put down there. A lot of people like to use those. I like to use something because I'm serious about what I do. I also use it for my cross stitch and other art forms that I like to do. Um, my freehand embroidery, all that stuff. I like to use something called the craft optic glasses, the glasses, which I love. They are regular glasses and you can actually get them in your prescription and they actually have like the little lenses on them. Now with those, I absolutely love them. The thing you want to remember is they are pricey. Um, so they run approximately $500, but there's something that even if your prescription changes through the years, you can send them into the company and they will change them. Of course, you can get the cheapies, the $29, $39 um, micro type glasses that just flip up and down um, from your cr local craft store. But for me, it's well worth um, paying to have the wonderful craft optics. Um, so that's something to consider as well. So the key is spend some time practicing on paper first, just like we initially did here, because you definitely want to start with paper first to build that wonderful hand-eye coordination that you're going to need at the machine. And then remember, when you go over to the machine, whether you're on a sit-down or whether you're on a stand-up, remind yourself that your machine is simply the pencil and your quilt sandwich is the paper. And that's gonna tie both things together. It's gonna be a lot more easy to maneuver. If you have hydraulics, lift that machine up high so you're right there on your work and you're not hunched over your work like that. If you don't have hydraulics and your table is a little too low, make sure to utilize the wonderful tools we have such as the saddle stools, um, and those types of things. You want to make sure to take care of your body so that that way it can take care of you later on. The longer you can quilt and do the things that you love, uh, the better for all of us. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I certainly enjoyed sharing with you. I know it's been a question that a lot of you have said, hey, will you show us your way of doing this? There are a lot of different ways to do this, um, and that is just one of many. You explore and find the right way for you. All right, everybody, know you're loved. We'll see you down the road. Take care of yourself and take care of each other. Goodbye. <laughs>